I think it was in like third or fourth grade, we started watching this film on Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, it was an animated film, and y- y- you know how those days go, right? The the teacher brings out that cart with that big old, thick old TV on it, puts the cassette tape in, teacher sits back because she's watched this film every year for the past 20 years of her life while she drinks her Route 44 drink. And you you sit there because you know you don't have to learn about negative numbers or some or learning how to write cursive today. And you're the happiest you could be back then. You're the happiest you could be. You sit back. I mean, even nowadays, right? Turning a movie on and where you could just turn your brain off, not worry about all the stress you got and just watch a movie. Still one of the best feelings. And back then, right? You sit next to one of your buddies. Maybe you clown around a little bit. Uh, You sit next to a girl you have a crush with and, and hopefully she, you know, smiles at you or something back then, right? The extent of what happens in third grade. And we watched this animated, I, I kind of want to say I was younger because I think about like, why would they show an animated film? I guess third grade is pretty young. So we started watching this animated film on Martin Luther King Jr. And I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why this is so, like how it stuck to my memory so much. And it's not obviously the, the impact of Martin Luther King is, does not need explanation. But when we were watching this film back then, I think one of the reasons that it stuck with me was in the film, they show the part that he gets shot. It's it's almost like a whole life depiction, right? Because back then, movie time isn't constrained to uh, periods of a class, right? You're not in a 45 minute block. They can show a whole hour and a half film. So we're watching this whole film of this life, the life of MLK. All the way to the point where he gets shot. <laughs> And back then, obviously, gun violence wasn't as prevalent or as uh, common as it is today. So more than likely, that film is nowhere near close to being approved to be shown in classes. But back then, to remember that scene pretty vividly, and don't get me wrong, it was was animated, right? So it wasn't as gory or violent as a real-life depiction would be. He gets shot, and I literally start crying. In front of everyone. I mean, obviously, I wasn't like, like, you know, making audible crying sounds, but I had tears coming down my eyes. You know, like like when you watch Pursuit of Happiness in today's age, right? You're like, damn, I'm I'm tearing up to this shit. And so looking back at that day now and being in this almost 30-year-old body, seeing uh, everything you can see nowadays with social media, just having your eyes just more wide open to shit with racial inequality, racial discrimination, just the way things are set up in society to never really reach a point where it's balanced back out. It is pretty, pretty crazy to think about his impact on the history timeline. I even went back and read the, um, I have a dream speech, the infamous speech that obviously, I mean, I, I would hope everyone knows about, but not many people realize not realize, uh, not many people can recollect much stuff from that speech outside of that one line. It's pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy. The last time that someone's probably given a speech that good in the public eye and that impactful, I can't remember. And even, and <laughs> I wonder if he had a writer. And and I remember growing up, I'd always be confused at why, like, Actually, not even growing up, right? Till probably 24 hours ago, I was always confused as to why Martin Luther King Jr. Day was not in February to be, you know, part of Black History Month. And for those that don't know, his birthday is in January. So, and obviously they want to kind of, uh, what's it called? Regulate the day that the federal holiday is observed. So that's why it's always the third Monday of January. With that being said, did I get off of work today? Sorry, was I given a federal holiday for work today? Nope. Uh, I, I'm, I am truly confused at how these companies decide, like, okay, we, we observe these holidays and we don't observe these holidays. And is it racist? Like, we got Juneteenth off. And like I said in the previous podcast, that shit is like four years old. MLK Junior Day has been around for probably 60 years. I think they say he would have been 95 today. Is that right? Whatever. The whole point is being like, why don't we get that day off? We don't get Columbus Day off. Like, how do companies decide all of this shit? Anyways, that, that's besides the point. I'm losing, I'm losing track here. 
Juneteenth ain't got shit on MLK Day. Ladies and gentlemen, happy MLK Day. My name is Ajay Patel. Welcome to the Ajay Patel Show. I apologize for how tardy this comes out because uh, like we talked about last week, sometimes I'd be delaying on this shit. Sometimes it's just a procrastination, which brings me to how's everyone doing on their goals? How's everyone doing on their fitness, their financial wellness, whatever else you have listed on your sheet of new year new me i have been decent decent right i say decent while i'm prefacing that this podcast will be coming out late but i finally got back in the gym and it almost just feels like momentum right like if you go one day then you go the second day then it's just like okay i kind of i'm I'm starting a routine here i can kind of get this going and what also helps is just having a supporting cast right i have a couple friends here uh in Los Angeles. Obviously, Isha is also a big gym goer. So to have a group that's like, Ayo, like, well, we're going at three today. It's not a question of whether we are going. The question just becomes, when are we going? What time of the day are we going? But I keep doing shit like eating like an animal. It, it's always the gateway. It's always the gateway product, whether it's alcohol a little gummy action, just being up late, going out, going to Whole Foods and buying snacks. And, and so it's almost like it just it just counteracts, right? You go to the gym for a couple hours, you burn however many calories, but then next thing you know, you're eating chips at 11.30 p.m. Then you're waking up, having a bagel, not really being active, then being active at 3, 4, and then doing the same shit again. And so that's what I'm, I'm trying to uh, focus on a little bit more this week as far as like, yo, if you like partake, right? Partake, ha- have a drink with people, have a little gummy action occasionally, but then just, just drink water. Don't, don't open the Uber Eats app. Don't go to Whole Foods. Just sit there and, and just be hungry. Chew a piece of gum. So I am this week trying to focus on more so of just, you know, just close the Uber Eats app. Don't don't go to Whole Foods and snack. At, at 1030, it, it's time to go to just you got you are why are you not in bed? Cause that's what it is half the time, right? Like I, I went out this last weekend, um, and, and not even before the weekend, right? Like I said, I have friends in town. We we stay up, hang out, watch shit on TV, and then that leads to like, ah oh, man, you know what? I could use a snack right now. I could use some popcorn, I could use some chips. Oh shit, there, 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 there's cookies there. Half the battle is just not having the stuff in the house. I think that truly is half the battle. If you don't have chips in the house, if you don't have chocolate, whatever it is, you can't eat it. With the Uber Eats and stuff, at least that's a little bit of friction, right? You have to order it. You you see how much you're paying. You're like, ah, never mind. But if the stuff already exists in the house, that's a hell of a problem. But I'm I'm gonna get better at that this week. Hopefully, knock on knock on anything. But besides that, other things I've been up to. Uh, went to a winery this past Saturday. I went to Cielo Farms in Malibu. Pretty decent winery. Um, Very gorgeous spot. I I think I told you guys about when I went to Rosenthal's winery, and it was more of like a beer garden. And that's just like, all right, bro, you know, this this ain't really a winery. But their wine was better than Cielo's. Cielo's was neat, and they, they probably had maybe like four to five, six four to five good selections out of their maybe 30 wine variety. But on top of that, they had some really good food. So it's like, it's like, damn, you know, like this place is selling us this, this not so great wine, but at least there's food here. And so it's all about just what they, you know, like just the experience. They don't do the wine tastings anymore. They now, now they, (laughs) this, I, I think I talked about this where it's like, they don't, come around and they're like, oh yeah, this is a 1988 cab from blah, 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 Spain. And you know, the people crush the grapes with their feet themselves. And then they peel it, all that nonsense, right? But it's part of the experience. Obviously, if you want wine, you can just hop over to Whole Foods, hop on the balcony, and then just drink it yourself. A lot of wineries have started to just pour the wine. They'll just show the bottle, right? They don't really get into it. And then they let you drink away. Now that, I think the excuse they use is the uh, the less contact, right? So now I'm not at the person's table. I'm not presenting stuff. I'm not spreading my germs. I'm not getting their germs. We're a safer place here in California. 
Now they hand you a sheet of paper and you're supposed to just read that off to the class and be like, oh, this is a blah, blah, blah. Obviously, you can just read it to yourself, but it's a blah, blah, blah from, oh, yeah, they crush the grapes with their feet, all that stuff. I don't know why I keep sticking to that line. But the experience has just diminished. And it's not like the prices have gone down with it. If anything, they've just gone up because it's like, how do you still recover from that COVID uh, hole that you dug yourself into? Not dug yourself into, but that just got dug. No fault of your own. Just happened. Going back to the resolutions, though, I hope y'all are tracking pretty good to yours. I'm still trying to you know, get a good rhythm of how I'm trying to pursue mine. Um, even with stuff like work, right? Like I had just, I just have these small tasks to do. I have these small tasks to do for people that, uh, I know it's not crucial. You know, it's a lot of record keeping. When you, if you've ever worked a tech job, you know that there's a lot of, not even the thinking part of the job, there's a lot of just mundane nonsense to it. If you create a table, if you create a dashboard for someone to use, uh, you got to document everything. You got to write like, oh, this dashboard does this and it's from this data source and it's for these people and this is how it's loaded. <sighs> like, who wants to do that? And so it's tasks like that where I've just been kind of slacking a bit where I know it'll probably take me an hour to finish it all. But I've just been pushing it off week by week and then just sending emails being like, hey, sorry, blah, 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 this and that. So stuff like that, where I'm trying to still get better at the work aspect of resolutions, but I don't know. I, I, I'll, st I'll still probably just put it off for another week or two. Episode 19. Man, I, I am excited for uh, to hit the 20s. Like we've talked about the statistics. It'll be a fun time. I will make sure to release that on time. I am verbally committing myself right now. Um, still getting a rhythm of how I want to keep doing these things, right? Do I open with the story? Do I go into the headlines like I used to? Do I prepare a topic? Um, and this is the ones that I'm just talking about where it's just myself. Obviously, when you have someone else on here, you can kind of go back and forth a little bit. Um, one thing I was looking at a little bit more and more was coffee intake. There was a there was a story that caught my eye where my mom always gets on to me when I'm in town and she's just like, you can't just keep drinking coffee. It, it'll, you know, destroy your stomach. Because more than most of the time when I go to uh, when I go back home, I'll have a glass of coffee or a cup of coffee with her. And then afterwards, I pour it again. And sometimes I'll have a third one. So then I saw this article that was like how much caffeine you should actually have and when. And I've heard the Andrew Huberman um, podcast about caffeine intake and when you should have it and when you should not have it. Uh, the pros and cons of it. But this article kind of just helped to be a little bit refresher on that. And I know, obviously, caffeine being the, sorry, coffee slash caffeine being the most popular drug out there. I thought it'd be a fun little thing to talk about. So I'm just going to be skimming some, some through most of this. Uh, about 100 to 150 milligrams or a cup and a half is a ballpark amount that will deliver a boost. The effects generally kick in about five minutes after consumption increase to become optimal for between roughly 15 and 120 minutes. Caffeine has been linked to physical benefits too. People, according to the 23 study, New England Journal participants average a thousand steps more when they drink caffeinated coffee, caffeinated coffee than when they didn't. The downsides, uh, it can disrupt your sleep. Now, I've done this a couple times where it's like, at, at 11 p.m., I'll be like, oh, shit, you know what? I have a lot of work to do. Maybe if I stay up a little bit longer today, if I stay up till about two or three and I finish whatever tasks I have, I'll be more prepared for tomorrow. So then I'll have a cup of coffee at 11. And then I still end up passing out at like 12, 1 p.m. or 1 a.m. So I don't think it I wonder how much it actually affects, you know, falling asleep versus like the quality of sleep. Because I've been sleeping like shit lately, and probably because I've been having coffee after 6 p.m. I think on the Huberman podcast where he talks about this, he said not to have caffeine 12 hours before sleeping. So that means you're la if, if you're going to sleep at an average day of 10 p.m., you should be having all your coffee intake by 11 a.m. So... That's something I still need to improve on. Uh, the extra caution piece of this article was saying kids under 12 should avoid caffeine while 12 to 18 year olds should have no more than 100 milligrams a day. If you're 12 to 18, just just have a Coca-Cola. 
you know, like just just have other shit that has caffeine. You do not want to start drinking this garbage. I mean, coffee is amazing right nowadays. But when I was 12 to 18 years old, there's no way I would have liked this crap. Even now, right? I pour coffee and then I douse it with coffee, mate. The hazelnut kind, the one with sugar. And I get it. People are like, oh, you know, you don't even drink coffee. You, you, you're having coffee, mate, with a side of coffee. Shut up. You know, like it just it tastes better. I like coffee black. Like I, I can't really angle my cup to show the camera right here, but I drink it both ways. But I didn't start drinking this stuff till I was probably 19 in college. And then I was still having what flat whites. I don't know. I still didn't know crap about it. Only recently I started figuring out how lattes, cappuccinos, the difference between uh, how like how they how an espresso shot leads to X, Y, and Z, right? That's the base of coffee with hot water, cold brew. We have all the coffee tools here. I have a a, a Keurig that I don't really know where it is where it is. But this coffee machine that you probably see on camera. It's just some Philips coffee machine that pours espresso shots, coffee, hot water, all that. A French press, two French presses, one from Starbucks. That's absolute garbage. Don't ever get that crap. Another French press from Ikea, which is the greatest thing in the world. And then a Chemex, which it's not the most optimal for storage and washing, but it's a very aesthetic piece. So coffee just being a very vital part of my day. Don't get me wrong. I can go without, but it's like uh, one of those things where it's a nice beverage to have in the morning, right? It gets you going a little bit. Obviously, it gets the the you know the the body flowing, if you know what I'm saying. It gets you go to the restroom a little bit, and then it just kind of kickstarts the day. It's also just a lovely beverage to just go have, right? You 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 go walk around town, and then I think it's probably bigger in like European countries where every hour of the day you're probably going to have like a little uh, cappuccino, a little espresso shot. And then you keep going with your day, right? It gives you that little boost and it keeps you moving. Like like I said, right? A thousand extra steps a day for people that do drink coffee. So how much more can I talk about coffee, you ask? Um, I also have a cold brew, a little steeping thing, which I definitely recommend for the not so cold months. Um, I do want to learn how to make cha, though. Chai tea, as we like to say sometimes. I do want to learn how to make cha. It's, you know, I have all the masalas and stuff here. I have the, you know, like the the pot that has the spout on it because when my mom came here she demanded that i have jaw stuff uh i mean by demanded she just went and got the stuff herself i have the masalas i i don't really carry whole milk but that is one thing that i am trying to learn how to make especially be, especially because when people come over and they don't drink coffee and they don't want tea as far as like uh you know like tea bags earl gray all that stuff it'd be nice to be able to have that kind of uh Peace in my arsenal. Like, oh, you want cha? No problem. This is how you do it. On to some sports. On to some sports. Oh, my gosh. Y'all don't hear me talk much football because um, it, it, it's a slow burn for me, right? Like, I, it's hard for me to get invested in football. I don't, I, one, because of the pace of the game. Two, because I barely know anyone, right, outside of the popular players that you see on social media, uh, like, Obviously, Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, CeeDee Lamb, Dak, right? There's like maybe, you know, 10% of actual players on whatever team you're watching or the league in general. There's no way I, I that's why another reason I never have gotten into um, what's it called fantasy. Fantasy has always, always been a strange thing to me where it's just like the losing punishment has always been the interesting part of it. Because fantasy in general, right? It's fun to be able to draft your own team, see how it competes against your friends' teams, and then make trades as necessary. Injuries happen. Oh, shit. You know, this is how I got to deal with it. It gives you that general, that GM, general manager feel. Similar to like if you bought a 2K game, if you bought Madden. It, it's a fun game. The punishments have been very strange to me. Like, you know, when people say, oh, the loser has to wear a dress and run around town for five hours. The loser has to stay in a waffle house for 24 hours. And for each pancake they eat, it knocks off an hour. It, that piece has always been weird to me because it's like, yo, these are these some of these things are a bit strange. And I'm not saying the extreme ones, right? Where it's like, oh yeah, get naked and walk around town and hug eight people, right? Some of these things are just really weird. That's not my point though. 
back to the NFL stuff. I watched the Cowboys just embarrass the entire city. And, and, you know, it's tough, right? Like, I'm not a Cowboys fan per se, but I don't want people talking shit. You know, I hate seeing anti-Cowboys fans happy, if that makes sense, right? Like, I don't care about my success, but I don't want y'all to be happy for their demise. It's a weird little conundrum versus like where if I'm watching the Mavericks, right, I'm emotionally invested. I want them to win. And if they lose, then obviously there are going to be people that, you know, get their jokes off. You know, whatever. It's fine. But for the Cowboys stuff where I'm not invested and people are, you know, clowning like, oh, this is America's team. Oh, bro. You know, like Texans all the way, man. (laughs) And obviously that's just an example. But it was bad, man. I watched that game, and then I watched the end of the Rams, uh, Rams Lions game. So after the Cowboys got absolutely destroyed, and another funny thing about that is just like it keeps happening, right? It, it keeps not even the destroyed part, where but it's just like the when it comes time to perform, and I'm talking about like playoff time, where each game counts. Obviously, each game counts during the season for your ranking and how you'll enter the playoffs. But these games being, if you lose, you're done. So when these games come and year after year, a game, something just goes very incorrect. Either something embarrassing like the infamous Tony Romo fumble, the uh, the Dez caught it year, which, I mean, that year was probably the one that I can be like, that was a decent play. You know, like that was a decent game. At least we put up a fight. But yesterday's thing where it was just like an absolute beating. And only Cowboys fans, right? Only Cowboys fans to be down by 24 points with eight minutes left and being like, yeah, I, th- I think we still got it. I think I think there's still hope. If, if we can score three touchdowns, get four stops. And like, what are we talking about here? The, the delirium, the delirious, the delirious whatever the word is for it is the, the delusion is crazy delirium. <laughs> so I watched that game disappointed, saw everyone be happy about the Cowboys demise and then watched the LA Rams game. And so then I was like, Oh, you know what? I, I live in LA. I'm a Rams fan. Now they lost by one point. So at least that was like a contest, right? They still put up a fight, still lost though. Another thing that you'll see a lot of backfire on is this whole peacock deal so on saturday there was two games on this past saturday there was two games and the game that i'm talking about was the kansas city game i can't even remember who they were playing but it got a lot of backlash because the game was on peacock which is another streaming platform if you don't know why it was not nationally televised is so strange to me and also where is peacock getting this money to buy the rights to this game i think recently i saw that um Oppenheimer is going to stream on Peacock exclusively somewhere in February. In addition to that, you know, like they they uh, they were the ones streaming the Kevin Hart special. Kevin Hart special was on Peacock, but he had that uh, documentary with Chris Rock on Netflix. Chris Rock's special was on Netflix. So the, the game of where things go is so confusing to me, especially with more and more streaming services coming about. But what I was thinking about was the lens of like my dad, my dad who loves watching football of, uh, to, to a strange amount. And, and I can never really get on board with it fully where he's like, I got to watch the game Monday night, Thursday night, Sunday. I got to watch the game. And I've never been that invested where I was like, I, I got to watch the game for, for football. I'm saying I've, I got to watch the game. And so on Saturday, he calls me. He was like, where the hell is this game? I checked NBC. I checked ABC, I checked ESPN, I checked TBS, TNT, I checked Amazon Prime. I said, it's on Peacock. He said, what the fuck is that? And and that is not a crazy thing to think. This man is 60 something years old. You think he's keeping up with all of these streaming platforms? I did a commercial shoot and they were like, yeah, it's gonna be on Fubi TV. What the hell, what is a Fubi TV? 
how do you keep up with this stuff? Like the greed of some of these things are crazy, right? Like these streaming platforms start up and then they have 20 million to throw around. So then they buy the rights to an NFL game. And then if you're the average American, right? Like most people, actually, no, I, I take that back. Most people can't afford this shit. Most people can't afford to have cable TV, which is maybe five bucks a month, maybe free if they have a little antenna and they um, have the axle cable into their coaxial cable into their TV. <laughs> so they have that. Then now you got to get Amazon Prime so you can watch the uh, Thursday night games. Now you got to get Peacock to watch this game. Everything should just be on national TV. You're talking about the majority of America watching these NFL games. Whether it's male, female, I, I don't care about the ratio for this conversation, but the majority of America watching these games do not have these streaming platforms. Yeah, sure, you could talk to your friends and everyone has probably everything nowadays, but that's a, you're talking about maybe a very small subset. I am, I will always be of the belief that all of these national televised sports games, right? I think sports is the one thing that I can think about where it's like, that should always be on cable TV. That in the news. Obviously, news outlets are very, uh, you know, like some people will be like, oh, Fox is very Democratic. CNN is very Republican. All of that stuff is whatever, right? That, that's just how companies get steered. Can't control any of that. But as far as the NFL games not being on national networks, it's crazy to me. Which takes me to my next thing, which is um, the world of movies and TV in general. Now, I signed up for this uh, newsletter in my email, which is called The Dailies. And they basically break down like, oh, okay, you know, like um, this month or this week, these are the movies that came out. Oh, also the the ESPYs are tonight, the Emmys are tonight, the Golden Globes happened last week. They'll break all of that stuff down. So for me, I signed up for it so I can get kind of a, an insight into what's happening in the movie and film world, just so I can stay up to date a little bit more. Whenever I do any type of projects, I can hold a conversation with some type of substantial knowledge about like, oh yeah, 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 that movie did the, you know, like this movie is out right now. And it also helps when you're like with friends and you can be like, oh, what should we watch? We should watch this because it came out this week and it's on this streaming platform. But in this game of um, streaming and TV and film, right? I, I recently, I got the newsletter in today and one line that caught my eye was this possible 2024 box office slump incoming. I'm just going to read the excerpt from the email or sorry, from the newsletter. The box office outlook for 2024 is grim with analytics firm Gower Street predicting global grosses dropping to 31.5 billion, a 5% decrease from 2023. The downturn is largely due to a reduction in wide releases caused by industry strikes leading to a significant gap in blockbuster films especially in the early months of the year. Major studios like Disney have delayed releases, contributing to fewer major tent poles and increasing the likelihood of further theater closures. The situation is compounded by the end of financial support for theaters negotiated during the pandemic. And the industry must adapt to changing audiences, preferences, challenges of re-engaging viewers. Yeah. And then, and then it kind of talks about some of the NFL stuff, which I just mentioned. But I get it. Right. Like we I, I don't know if I mentioned this before where it's like you have all of these strikes, not all of these strikes. You have the major strike that happened. And so a lot of. Projects are now pushed back and in this period that we're in right now, we're seeing the effect of. Shitty projects coming out. I just watched the movie Lift. On Netflix, it's a Kevin Hart movie and Kevin Hart, a great comedian, obviously a freaking like his resume speaks for itself but this movie was ass and what's crazy is is he plays basically this movie was uh basically like fast and furious if they wanted to try to redo it with a new cast but it was horrible it was horrible and and you got to wonder like how do these things get produced how do they get approved how do they get a budget for this stuff and what's crazy is like we were talking about it where this will come out on netflix and it will do a certain number of dollars because of the person's name but as far as grading it as a film it's not good please watch it and let me know what you think but kevin hart is probably the worst actor in that movie he don't care i love him as a the the comedic role in movies and I understand what he's trying to do at this point where he wants to now branch off. And since he has a platform and money to 
kind of do these roles and pay certain people to be in the movies. Because that cast is pretty good. A lot of those people you'll recognize from different TV shows and very, very, uh, what's it? What's the word I'm looking for? Experienced actors in that movie. Kevin Hart probably being one of the least experienced actors in that movie for that particular genre. For him being that serious, Dominic Toretto, Fast and Furious guy being like, oh yeah, come on team, we can do this. It, it was a strange role, but he can do that now. Same thing with Shah Rukh Khan, right? Like we know him as the lover boy from all the Bollywood movies growing up, which is what made him the star he is today. But if you watch some of the movies that he's producing himself, he can put himself in those roles that he originally wanted to be in before he became this lover boy. He is now this action star. He is the guy that can beat up 30 guys without having a gun or a knife. That's the, that's the role he puts himself into now. Do we like that role? I don't. I highly doubt many other people do. I think I was watching Joan or Patan on Netflix. What the hell was that? The music videos, all, that stuff is a, a separate entity, right? I'm talking about a movie itself and being like, oh, I like this character in this role. But when you reach that point where you can just put yourself in these roles, why not? You're literally your own boss. You're funding your own movie. Who the hell are, is someone else to be like, you know what? Nah, I need you to do this role. But going back to the Kevin Hart thing where this movie was not great. And it's there's been a slew of movies where slow, slew? whatever, uh, a handful of movies that I've watched recently that it's just like, damn, this was bad. Damn, this was also bad. I, I did like Leave the World Behind, and that was probably the best movie I watched in the last couple weeks. But man, like I, I still haven't watched the Marvels. It, it's, been, it's been this period of bad movies. Do I think it's going to get better? 100% yes, because of the strikes being over taking a turn a little bit and thinking about the business in general, right? The entire business, whether it's Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney, Peacock. How, how are these folks going to stay afloat? It's so annoying to even nowadays being like, oh, okay, let's watch this. Okay, what is it on? HBO? No, I think it's on uh, Prime. Oh, no, I think it's on, oh, it's on Apple TV. Oh, I need to get a subscription for that. There's so much stuff. And obviously, we were just talking about the box office side of things, right? As far as theaters um, having a decline, I think less people going to the theaters. I think the world of movies will stay alive, right? The movie theater will never die, just like I think the shopping mall will never die. Even though you can get stuff online on your TV, the whole point of movie theaters going to the mall is getting the hell out of your house, getting out of your house to then, you know, have a full night's experience. You get the kid, you get to take the kids to have some popcorn, have a soda, sit down, watch a movie. It's an experience that I don't think will ever go away. I think movies, movie theaters, you'll, you will see a bunch of closures start happening because it's like, okay, well, as Cinemark, I can't keep 30 branches alive at the same time. So I don't think movie theaters will go anywhere itself. But the world has changed as far as like, personally, if the movie's longer than like two hours, two and a half hours, I, I honestly just prefer watching it at home. If it's a movie that I'm just like, uh, that, that, that's an that's a at-home watch. Like a Kevin Hart movie, for example, that is an at-home watch. When it's a movie like an Avengers film, yeah, I'm going to the theater. When it's big movies like that, that's still the reason I haven't seen Oppenheimer. I, I have the torrent stuff. I could watch it in a heartbeat, but it's like, damn, you know what? I want to experience that in the theater. I want to experience that with the sound, with the, with all the visual aspects of being on a bigger screen. I want to witness that. So now you have movie theaters shutting down. Let's say you're making less from box office. So a movie that releases now that would have made, oh, we talked about this too, where the world of movies will have to change, right? They'll have to produce the same amount of revenue with cutting costs back maybe 15%. Now, what does that always look like? Like with these strikes, right? I think there was two folds to the strike. One being the AI use of people's faces in perpetuity. And then the other one being, I think, just wages in general. I apologize if I'm wrong on that. 
But the wages in general part, that is going to have an effect. I think in this daily news, newsletter, it talked about the uh, one of the divisions of Amazon laying people off. It might have been the music division. So I don't know if that's like the music division is suffering or they can't afford the same operating expense for Prime Video. So now they have to cut back on a certain another division. The money is going to stay the same, right? I, I, I hate when people are always like, uh, yeah, you know, like, these people need to make less. Like, you know, the heads of company, Bob Iger needs to make less and then pay his employees more. That's not how it's going to work. That's never how it's going to work. They're never going to cut back their pay. I think the only CEO that I heard of making less money in the last couple of years was uh, Tim Cook, where he, he had to. The Bob Iger stuff, that the money that man is making or whoever head of studios is making will stay the same. So how do they pay employees more now? They start cutting jobs. They start cutting jobs and being like, all right, you know what? Now I need you five to do the same work that the 15 people used to do. But now you're making more. So you got your wish. But you also got more work now. In addition to that, right? Like you either cut people and the workload increases on the people. Or instead of that, or in addition to that, you do what Amazon Prime is now doing, where their streaming service, there used to never be any ads. But I just recently got the email and it was like, hey, we're going to now start introducing ads. We're going to start introducing ads. And if you want you know, an ad-free experience, you have to pay X amount of dollars. I haven't even mentioned Hulu. Holy shit. There's so many. How do you even keep up with this stuff? But like I was saying with Amazon is you can now pay $2.99 a month or whatever the price is a month to have an ad-free experience. So personally, I was like, okay, you know what? I, I do watch a handful of stuff on Amazon Prime. Right now, I'm watching Reacher. When Invincible comes back, I don't know what happened to it. It just ended in the middle of a season. Invincible, The Boys, probably two more things I can just add on to the list. But there's a decent number in there where it's like, okay, you know what? For three to five bucks a month, I would rather have an ad-free experience. So the money is being made somehow. And... It, I really want to do, I really want to go through my, uh, you know, checking account, what, what, you know, whatever auto pay stuff I have enrolled and see how much I'm paying for. Off the top of my head, I think I personally, right, I share stuff just like everyone else. I'm personally paying for Apple TV, Peacock, Amazon Prime now, um, HBO Max. Okay, no, I don't pay for HBO Max. I think that's through my brother-in-law along with Netflix. But I'm paying for those three in addition to, I pay for Sling TV. Look at, like, bro, in this last, what, 15 minutes I've been talking about this. Look at how many streaming services I mentioned. How is that sustainable? But at the same time, I, I do kind of get it, right? Because then you end up with a monopoly. Imagine if everything was just on Amazon Prime. Is there supposed to be that much wealth into one bucket? I think there'll be a point where uh, these streaming services will start teaming up as far as subscriptions go. And so if you pay 50 bucks a month for Hulu, now you'll get Disney and you'll also get this. So the revenue is still being split, but as the consumer, my friction is less. So how is this going to look going forward? I don't know. The money will be made, and I think better projects will start coming down the pipeline, whether it's on Netflix or just in the box office. I mean, we just saw the uh, Golden Globes, Golden Globes, whatever award show happened the other day, and Oppenheimer and Barbie absolutely destroyed it. Even right now in theaters, I think that Mean Girls uh, remake is out, Beekeeper, Wonka. How much of these are actually good, even though they're doing certain numbers? I have no idea. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is out. I had no freaking clue but that was there. Down 5.2 million with 108.2 million total, swimming ahead of some recent superheroes, but not the original. I mean, the we're always going to compare to some shit that we can beat. So, like I said before, comment your thoughts. Let me know what you think. I think this streaming war is just going to be ongoing, but at the same time, I'm down to not have like a ticket master monopoly. All of that, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Uh, I am starting to think about 
how to expand this, like I've said, right? Obviously, there's the things that I've done in the past where I chop clips up. The cadence of how I post needs to obviously be improved with previous habits. Um, in addition to that, I'm thinking about opening a Patreon channel. For those that don't know about it, I think it's a, not I think, it is a paid subscription. So <laughs> another streaming service, another paid subscription service where um, I will re I will always release the weekly episode um, for, I guess this is free, right? Whether it's Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, that one will always be there. But in addition to that, there will be an additional episode in the week. What day that comes out, Wednesday or Thursday, I don't know of. I'm still figuring all that out, but just wanted to give you guys some um, insight into what's going on in my head as far as how I'm trying to expand this channel a little bit more. But all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a beautiful MLK day. My name is Ajit Patel, and thank you and goodbye.